In the previous lesson on meiosis, we looked at some of the costs of sexual reproduction. For example, only one half of the genes pa are passed on to the offspring. So males and females, when they have offspring, they're only passing on one half of their genes in each offspring. That's in contrast to cloning, where 100% of the parents' genes are represented in the offspring. In addition, there's the time, energy, and resources. That's a cost, as well as the danger of the process of sexual reproduction. So we said there must be benefits if this mode of reproduction has evolved. In fact, if we look uh, around the world at all living things, sexual reproduction is the predominant form of reproduction in animals, plants, fungi, and in single-celled organisms that are complex cells like amoeba, paramecia, etc. Um, now, while amoeba paramecia can reproduce by mitosis, they also are capable of the sexual reproduction. So it raises the question about the origin of sex. And if we go back to our diagram showing the history of life on Earth with Luca originating some 3.8, 4 billion years ago, and then a whole mess of bacteria evolving for a long, long time. Uh, Earth was really just populated with different forms of bacteria. And then we saw that special event, that special endosymbiosis event, where two bacteria, in a sense, merged. And here we have the origin of, cl of, uh, of mitochondria. And this, then, this single-celled organism that is beginning to be more complex would be the ancestor to all subsequent life forms on Earth. Not only the amoebas and the paramecias and the euglenas, but also multi-celled organisms, the animals and fungi and the plants. Now, the argument then is if the animals and fungi and plants and single-celled organisms are uh, capable of sexual reproduction, then the common ancestor of those organisms had evolved sex. So the picture that's emerging is that sex evolved in single-celled organisms of the complex variety. Bacteria simply dup duplicate their, their DNA, their circular piece of DNA, and then they can divide. It's these complex cells that have the machinery for this uh, sexual reproduction process. So there must be some benefit because it was retained in all the subsequent evolution of life on Earth. What is that benefit? Well, you'll recall that that meiosis process that makes the sex cells is a two-division process. So to keep it simple, we'll look at a single-celled organism, four chromosomes, duplicates its chromosomes, so we have eight. And you'll recall then that half of the duplicated chromosomes go to one cell, the other half go to the other. And then that second division produces four cells with two chromosomes. So we've reduced the number of chromosomes by half. Now, we understood that to be uh, necessary to prevent chromosome doubling, but, but where's the advantage to, to doing this process? And here we have to pay attention to uh, this stage right up here. So after chromosomes are duplicated, here they are condensed, there's something special that's going to happen early in meiosis. And we'll compare it with mitosis in this picture here. You'll recall that during mitosis, all the cell's chromosomes, they're duplicated at this stage, they line up. We can think of this as sort of like a line dance. They all line up, and what's going to happen in mitosis is that the duplicates are going to detach, and then one of each is going to go to the opposite side of the cell, and then the cell will split once. But in meiosis, something interesting happens. The two look-alike chromosomes are going to get together. Now, you'll recall that uh, we've made uh, some of these chromosomes green and some red. The green ones would have been in, in the, let's say, the female's uh, sex cell, and the red ones would have been in the male's sex cell. So the union of them uh, gives the offspring, so half their chromosomes came from the mother, half came from the father. And we're indicating that by the uh, coloration here. So the green ones came from the mother and the red ones came from the father. So what's happening here in this first stage of meiosis is that these similar chromosomes, they have a similar size, they have similar kinds of genes, but there might be some variation in the genes, but those similar kind of look-alike chromosomes from mom and dad are going to get together. So we're going to call these look-alike chromosomes. These are the ones that have the same size, same kinds of genes, but one came from mom, one came from dad. They're going to get together. Notice that picture is different than what happens in mitosis. Now, why is this getting together important? 
Well, to see that, we need to consider or remember what a chromosome is. You'll recall that a chromosome is just a long molecule of DNA that's wrapped around proteins and such, but uh, here we just see the DNA part of it, and so we have a length of DNA that has several genes on it. In fact, a chromosome may have hundreds of genes on it. Here we have uh, this stretch here is gene 1, gene 2, gene 3, gene 4, and each of these genes is a recipe to make a protein. So the sequence of DNA letters along one strand is the instruction for how to put together a certain protein. So chromosomes then are a whole bunch of genes just sort of lined up along the length of the DNA molecule. Now, what happens when these uh, look-alike chromosomes de get together in early meiosis? What happens is that as they are sort of uh, getting together, there can be breaks in the chromosomes. So here we have mom's chromosome here, the green one, and dad's here. There can be breaks at, at uh, a certain region where they're sort of entangling, and the chromosomes can be recombined. And what that means is, is that you're kind of mixing up uh, mom and dad genes. So here we have the top portion of this chromosome is dad's, but because of this break and a recombination, the bottom part of the chromosome is mom's. And here we have the top part of this chromosome is mom's, but the bottom part is dad's. So what's happening during this uh, get together of the lookalike chromosomes is there there is the chromosomes are exchanging you might say genetic material so there are breaks along the chromosome length and then uh, the repair process mixes up the chromosomes now the result of that is our second important thing that meiosis does it generates sex cells with unique combinations of chromosomes and this increases trait variation in the population. So again, here's this other picture, and we have the parent cell with four chromosomes. Notice in this early stage of meiosis, we have the lookalike chromosomes getting together. It's here where the, the breaks in the chromosomes and then the recombination is happening so that we get these uh, varied types of chromosomes. Notice we have a green chromosome with a little red part there, red chromosome with a little green part here, and the result are the four cells with two chromosomes, but if you look carefully, the combinations are all unique. Here we have the small green one and a large red one with a little green tip, and we got the, the large red one, the small green one. We have the small red one and the large green one with a little red tip, and then the large green and small red. These are unique combinations of the maternal and paternal chromosomes. So what meiosis is doing here is the recombination process happening early in me meiosis is producing variation in the sex cells. So this is a really important uh, consequence of meiosis. It generates variation. Every sex cell has a unique combination, a unique mix of mother and father chromosomes. Another source of variation produced by meiosis occurs in this uh, early stage of meiosis as well. You'll notice in this picture here we have the red one here, the little red one, the little green one, and the big green one, and the big red one here. Now the precise alignment of these uh, look-alike uh, pairs can vary. That's just sort of random which way the little green one goes. So in this picture the little green one goes uh, to this side, so there it is in this cell over here, and the little red one goes to this side, and here it is in this cell. But it could have been the other way around. Now, to see the significance of that, notice what happening, what's happening to the other pair of chromosomes. Here, the big red one is ending up uh, in this cell, and the big green one is ending up in this cell. You see, if the little ones went, to, if they reversed their uh, pattern, if the uh, little red one went this way, <clears throat> then the little red one would be with the big red one, and the little green one would be with the big green one. But that's a random type of separation. So for each of these pairs of lookalike chromosomes, it's sort of random which way they go. And that also generates variation in the, in the end result in the final four sex cells produced by meiosis. So again, the, the summary here is that meiosis generates variation in the sex cells. So these are genetically unique. And there are two kind of... Uh, uh, processes that are gener generating variation. There's the random assortment, you might say, of these chromosomes during that first separation, and then there's also the recombination that's taking place in the early meiosis. Now that's 
One of the benefits then of sexual reproduction, uh, this meiosis process producing sex cells with variation, this will, this will give the population more variation uh, for natural selection to act upon. So if there are changes in the environment, a population with more genetic variation uh, will have a better time as sort of evolving adaptations to a rapidly changing environment. And so this would be one of the explanations for the, the, the benefit of sexual reproduction. It produces a population of individuals uh, more capable of evolving adaptations to changing circumstances.